Now let's consider one way how we can make progress item component even linear. If we open up this component, we will see that this component currently has two computed properties percentage and tracked activity seconds. And by the way, percentage computed property depends on tracked activity seconds. So we can say that these two computed properties are related and they both kind of represent the same concern. And there is also one more piece of data which is calculated dynamically, which is this function called getProgressColorClass. And this function, based on the value of the computed property percentage, derives the class which should be used to style progress scale. So right now we're going to consider one way of how we can move these three similar pieces of data in a separate place. And to reuse stateful logic in view components, there is a concept of composables. So we're going to create one such composable right now. For this, let's create new folder called composables inside source folder. And let's call our first composable progress. According to the concept, this composable is going to represent. And what composable is, is a basic function, which we're going to export right here. Let's call this composable use progress. And usage of prefix use in the composable name is one of the conventions how we should name composable functions. So what we're going to insert in this composable is those two computed properties percentage and tracked activity seconds. So let's cut these two properties from here and move them into our new composable. And now whatever data that should be exposed for other components to use from this composable should be explicitly returned from here. And since we need both of these properties accessible in our components, let's just return an object which consists of these two properties, percentage and tracked activity seconds. And as was said before, we also wanted to extract this function called getProgressColorClass from here and move it in our new composable as well. And for that, we're gonna create one more computed property, which we'll call ColorClass. And then let's also declare this computed property in our new composable. And this computed property is basically going to determine the class that should be assigned to progress scale based on the change in value of another computed property percentage. And as we know, computed property percentage is going to be updated every second if we have a stopwatch running. Therefore, our color class computed property will be reevaluated every second as well. And just to make this computed property accessible from outside, of this composable, we also have to add an entry to this object that we are returning from this composable. And now it's time to actually use our new composable inside progress item component. So let's call the function use progress. And right away, let's destructure return value of this function and use only those variables that we are actually going to need in the template of this component. So this component needs to access color class that should be assigned to progress scale. Also, it needs percentage value as well as tracked activity seconds property. So we're going to destructure all these properties in here. But actually, in order for this composable to work properly, we have to supply this composable with an activity object that we can access here by using props object like this. And now let's go back to our composable definition, add one parameter called activity and in the body of this function, we no longer have to reference object props in order to access activity object, because we are already passing activity object directly as a first parameter in this composable. So as it usually goes, whenever we use new function in the component, that function should be imported first. So let's write down an import statement for our composable use progress. We're importing this composable from the composables folder and the file called progress. After this, I'm going to copy all these imports, move them inside progress.js, and here I will basically remove unused imports and keep the rest. And pretty much the same thing I'm going to do inside progress item component. Let's also remove unused imports. And also there is one more thing that I have missed while declaring new computed property color class. And that is this, since we're using another computed property percentage in this computed property. In order to get the value of the computed property, we should reference value property like this. So eventually we end up with such composable, which stores 
three computed properties. And by the way, every computed property in here depends on the next one. Color class depends on the percentage, and percentage depends on direct activity seconds property. And of course, if those dependencies will change, it will lead to updates of dependent computed properties. And by the way, let's just shorten the name of the tracked activity seconds property. Let's call this property just tracked seconds. And after this, we also have to rename references. So inside progress item component, let's rename tracked activity seconds on tracked seconds. And the same thing we're going to do in the template right here. And one more occurrence of tracked activity seconds property exists inside progress.js. At the very end, let's rename this property on direct seconds. And eventually, if we're gonna take a look at the implementation of progress item component, we will see that this component now looks much leaner than before. And all it does is just imports a couple of functions, then it declares props, and all the complex logic which is responsible for dynamically updating progress scale was moved, into a separate composable that we have called useProgress. Actually, this component was already pretty simple before moving all this logic into a separate composable. But still, I just wanted to demonstrate this example of how we can leverage composable functions to move reusable functionality into separate functions. And even if we're not going to use our composable function more than once, it still serves a good purpose of code organization. So now I'm going to check this behavior in the browser and make sure that our application functions properly. So let's start tracking time for the coding activity and make sure that on the progress page, the progress scale will be growing for this activity. And after we're gonna change activity, it will be reflected on another progress scale. And finally, if we're going to reset the time of this stopwatch, then on the progress page, all percentages should turn zero. Great, everything is working as expected. Let's continue development in the next lesson.